When using Nextlink and Next.js, occasionally you may notice that your page loads white before the data shows up. Maybe you're using SSR and it takes a long time for the data to show up, or maybe your user is using a slow connection and they can't load the data as fast as you think. In this video, I'm gonna break down how to use a full page loader on every page when they click and transition through. So if you're ready to learn how to create a page loader, let's start by looking at some code. So the first thing we need to do is create a new Next.js application so that we can show you how to do page to page loading. So first do MPX, create next app, and then give your app a name. Once that's installed everything and it's loaded, we shall uh, open it in Visual Studio Code and I'll meet you there. So here we are inside a standard Next.js application and we're not really going to be doing anything special. First, we're going to create a new page here and we're just going to call it page two. And inside of that page two is where we're just going to set a page that we know has loaded. So we can do export default function page two and then return a div and say h1, this is a page. So now we have a page two, we can kind of clear out most of this content and just leave the heading and the main. And then we can create a link page here. So import link from next link. And then use this link to wrap a button. And inside that button, we'll just say, go to page two. And the href here will just equal slash page two. And then we'll do pass href. And that will give us everything that we need to make this work. So first, let's just make sure that our application runs. So do yarn dev, launch your local host, open that in your favorite browser. And here's our pages. I've launched the browser to localhost 3000. Click go to page two and it says, this is a page. So at this point, we're actually ready to investigate how you do this. So we're actually going to be spending some time in our app.js. Our app.js obviously contains everything that our application has. For example, you know every component, every component wrapper, whether you've got providers or CSS styles or whatever it might be. So that's where we're going to be. So inside this app.js, we need to do a few things. First, we need to know when events happen. For example, when does the change of a route happen? What happens if it completes? What happens if it errors? So we need to access those. On top of that, we also need to create a way to return a spinner that covers the whole page so that we know that the data behind has loaded and we're not seeing a blank white page before we see a page. Now, this may only happen if you're doing maybe SSR or you have a complicated page and what happens is a user will see a blank page before they see the page. Now that's not a great experience. If you see a blank page before the page loads in, you kind of like, is it working? Did something go wrong? And we don't want our users to have to worry about that. So what we're going to do is cover it in a spinner. In the example, I'm going to put a set timeout that's 5,000 milliseconds, just so that you can see it on screen. But in applications where let's say, for example, you're loading from SSR and you're loading a bunch of data and you're collecting data, this would be a good use case. So inside your app.js, we just need to import three things. Use router, and that comes from next router. And we need use state and use effect from react. Now we have those, we can create a function outside of this, my app. And this function is going to be our loading function. So we just do function, we call it loading. 
we don't pass anything in, and this is where we're going to handle everything. So first we're going to access use router. Then we're going to set a state. So we're just going to have a state of loading and then set loading, use state. And by default, we want it to be false. Underneath that, we're going to write a use effect. And the use effect is going to take on the job of essentially looking to see what events have happened and what events have completed or started or errored, etc. So the power of use router is it has this function. If you do router.events dot on, you can actually request different route events based upon what you want. Now the ones we're interested in are going to be route change start, route change complete, and route change error. These three here give us access to what we need. We can start the loading when the route change starts, and then we can finish it when either an error happens or the complete status happens. So inside of our use effect, what we're going to do is we're going to have two functions here, one called handle start and one called handle complete. Now the way handle starts going to work is we're going to pass in the URL. The URL is then going to check to see if the URL matches the router as path. So that's essentially saying, hey, if this event, router.events, URL does not match the current URL that we're at, set loading to true. Then if it's complete, we're going to set if the URL is equal to the router path. So if this URL matches the path, then we can set loading to false. So let's start with handle start. It's just going to equal, and then we're going to put URL, and then we're going to say URL does not equal router dot as path. And if that is true, we can just say and set loading to true. And then for handle complete, we can say the exact same thing here. So we can just copy and paste this, drop it in here. And we can just say, if it equals this, set this to false. And that's what you would do in a normal circumstance. And then underneath here is where we can do our uh, return. And then obviously our full return for what happens when this function is loaded. But let's just talk about this. So it's all, this is good for now. And this is what you should do in production, but I need to show you what would happen if it was actually loading data at a rate that, you know, could be on a server or something like that. So I'm going to set a set timeout here and we're going to set the timeout to equal function. And inside that we're going to set the loading to false. And then we will comma and we'll set this to 5,000. That should give us enough time to see the spinner in action. So now we can remove all this and then we can just do our events. So we're going to do router.events.on. So on an event, we're going to add a listener here. So we're going to use router change start. And we're just going to handle start. And then we need another one here so we can copy this down to save a bit of time. And we can say change start instead of change start, we can say change complete. And we'll do handle complete. And then finally, and just make sure you give it the right name. It's router dot events, not route dot events. And then finally, we need one more so we can copy the complete one because it's the same at the end and it's just change error. So this would be if something went wrong, we'd still want to show the page so that we could handle it correctly. And then we need to do our return here. And our return here is just going to be on the opposite of these. So we can actually copy this down 
And so browser's event off is what we want. So we can do routers dot event dot off. And then that will handle the opposite of this. So on event and on the off part. So now we have everything here, we actually need to write a loader. So I'm going to write a learner here. So we're going to say return loading and then inside of here, we can write a div and this div is going to get a class name. And we're going to set this to spinner wrapper. And then inside of here, we're going to have another div. Let me give this a class name equal to spinner. So what we have here is a spinner and a spinner wrapper. And at this point, this is ready to actually test. We just need to place it down in here, but I just want to do a full over the top uh, loader. So the loader will actually overlay over the top of the page so that if there is data loading in or there's a white page and then a blank page, people don't see that. They just see the data that we've required. So inside my global CSS here, I'm just going to write two pieces of CSS and then we'll be good. And I'm just going to speed this up because it's not really important to the tutorial, but you'll at least see how this works. So you've just watched me create some CSS, what we can talk about here. Basically, I created a wrapper that wraps the whole page up and has a background of white. And then I have this, which just has a border of this color and then just has some rotation. I don't know if it's going to look any good, but it'll at least do the job. So the final thing we need to do is actually implement loading. So down here in your return function, you can just add in the loader and a fragment. So we can do a fragment and then we can do loading and we can just move the fragment here to the end and hit save. So now this will load whenever there's a page load. So let's go ahead, launch our application and give it a test. Okay. So we're in the Next.js application. We're going to test now to see whether or not this, when we click this button, we should get a spin and loader. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. It's not the prettiest, but it does spin on screen and it will spin for however long we set in our timeout. And then if we go back a page, it will also do the spin as well. So there you have it, a way to do a page to page loader using Next.js. If you're looking for the GitHub, look in the description, it will be right there so that you can just copy and paste it as needed. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content around Next.js, web development and SaaS development. And until next time, see ya.